Okay, now we have C12, June 2017, IAL, question number five. Okay, so it says here, uh, use the remainder theorem to find the remainder when f of x is divided by x minus 1. So they specified what method to use, okay, which is actually the simpler way of doing it. Okay, where we want to um, find the remainder when this is divided by x minus 1. So we don't have to do long division. We have, what we can do is we can um, substitute inside the function f of x the value of x which makes this bracket what's divided by equal to zero okay that's what we have to do here so if we substitute inside this function what makes this bracket zero okay we will then uh, be able to find the remainder when it's divided by this value so if you put x minus one equals zero x is equal to one so that means we have to substitute x equals one into this function to find the remainder so we put one into the function you're going to replace the x with 1. So you have minus 4 times 1 cubed plus 16 times 1 squared minus 13 times 1 plus 3. Well, that gives you minus 4 plus 16 minus 13 plus 3, okay, which gives you, well, that's 16 minus 4, which is 12, and minus 13 plus 3. Okay, minus 13 plus 3 is minus 10. Okay, so that gives you 2. So therefore, the remainder, the remainder is 2. The remainder is 2. That's part A. Okay, then it says, use the factor theorem to show that x minus 3 is a factor of fx. Now, this is a very similar type of question. But it just so happens when something's a factor of f of x, then whatever number that makes that bracket zero, when you substitute into the function, will make the value of the function zero. So we know that x minus 3 equals zero. For that to happen, x must be equal to 3. So we're going to substitute x equals 3 into the original function. So we have f3 is minus 4 times 3 cubed plus 16 times 3 squared minus 13 times 3 plus 3 which gives you minus 4 times 27 hold on that didn't work did it minus 4 times 27 okay plus 16 times 9 minus 13 times 3 which is 39 plus 2 plus 3 you know we could just put this on a calculator if we wanted to um, as we can use a calculator for this all right so we have minus 4 times 21 uh, okay so you got minus 4 times 27 plus 16 times 9 minus 39 and plus 3 and we should get 0 which we do okay so therefore okay you can say as f3 is equal to 0 therefore x minus 3 is a factor of f of x okay that's part A, and that's part P, B of that question done. And um, then it says, hence fully factorize. Yeah, I'll do this now as well. Hence fully factorize f of x. So we know that x minus 3 is a factor. We just show, show this in the last part of the question. So what we can do to fully factorize it, one method we could use is we could use algebraic long division. So we can say x minus 3 into minus 4x cubed plus 16x squared minus 13x and plus 3. You've got to be careful when you're doing algebraic long division. If there was any of these x terms missing, for example, if the x squared term wasn't there, it was 
for x cubed plus minus 13x, for example, you would have to write plus 0x squared here. Whatever was missing, you have to fill it in with the 0 of that number. Otherwise, it makes everything out of place when we're trying to do the division. Okay, so always check for that first. In this case, we don't have to worry because everything's there. x cubed, x squared, x, and the constant. So now we say to ourselves, x times something gives us minus 4x cubed. Well, that's minus 4x squared. Okay, and then we multiply minus 4x squared with these two. So if minus 4x squared times x is minus 4x cubed. And minus 4x squared times minus 3, you get plus, and you get 12, and you get x squared. Now we have to subtract these two lines. Okay, so this of course disappears. You have 16 minus 12, which is 4. So you have 4x squared. Bring down the next term, which is minus 13x. And then you say 4x squared, well, x times something gives me 4x squared. Well, that's plus 4x. So 4x times x is 4x squared. And 4x times minus 3 is minus 12 x. So we've got to be very careful now we subtract. Subtract these two. Okay, when we subtract them, what you have to realize is you've got minus 13 minus minus 12. Now minus 13 becomes minus 13 plus 12, which is minus x, minus 1x. Bring down the next number, which is 3. And now, hopefully, we know that, th that x minus 3 is a factor. We should be left with exactly the same thing now underneath so there will be no remainder. So minus x into x goes minus 1 time. Minus 1 times x is minus x. And minus 1 times minus 3 is plus 3. Good. So we have, we, we're left with a remainder of 0. So we know that um, you know minus 4x squared plus 4x minus 1 is also a factor. Okay, so we've got x minus 3 times minus 4x squared plus 4x minus 1. Okay, so now we need to try to factorize this last part and see if it does factorize. Okay, and let's see if it factorizes. So to factorize something like this, let me just make some space here. Move this down a bit. Okay, so we have to factorize this part. Okay, so let me just take, I like to use this grid method of factorizing. It's a nice way of factorizing. You have here minus 4x squared, and you have here minus 1. Okay, these two are those two terms, and these are the terms that the middle term splits up into. So we've got to find two numbers. When you multiply them, you get the same as these two multiplied, which is 4x squared. And when we add them, we get plus 4x. The sum is going to be 4x. Okay, so um, when you multiply them, you get minus 4x squared, and we add them, you get 4x. Okay, it's going to be 2x and 2x, isn't it? 2x and 2x. Multiply to give you 4x squared and add to give you 4x. Okay, so now I'm going to take out from these two terms a common factor. Okay, from um, minus 4x squared and 2x. Now the common factor from these two terms, okay, is going to be um, 2x. All right. And the common factor from these two terms is also going to be 2x. All right. Um, and then I'm going to have, that's going to be, well, I have to put a minus here as well, one of them. Let me put minus in this one. Okay. That's going to be minus 4x squared. So I've taken out the minus as well. And 2x times plus 1 gives you 2x. And minus 2x times um minus 2x times plus 1, the no, minus 1, sorry, gives you 2x. So you've got minus 2x plus 1 and 2x minus 1. So we'll end up with minus 2x plus 1, and you've got um, 2x minus 1. Okay, so you could say that that factorizes to, to this. So we've got x minus 3, times minus 2x plus 1, times 2x plus 1. Okay? Yeah. That's fine. That's going to give you minus 4x squared. So when I multiply, I get minus 4x squared, plus 2x, plus another 2x, and minus 1. Okay, good. So this is kind of, this is now fully factorized. 
Okay, I could write this as 1 minus 2x times 2x minus 1 times x minus 3. Okay, that's perfectly fine. That So that's f of x fully factorized. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay, so now the last part of the question is asking us uh, to use your answer to part C uh, to um, part of this curve with the equation y equals f of x, okay? Use your answer to part C and the sketch to deduce a set of values for which f of x is less than or equal to zero. So we can see that it's equal to zero when 1 minus 2x and 2x minus 1 and x minus 3 equals zero. So if you try to solve this, you'll have the solutions x is equal to 3 and x is equal to a half and this will also give you x is equal to a half. This is like a repeated root almost. I guess you can you can express this um, as a repeated root. Okay, because you'll take the minus out. Okay, if you take the minus out of this, you'll end up with minus and 2x and minus 1. And this is another 2x minus 1. And this is an x minus 3. So I guess you could think that think of that as a repeated root. So this is a repeated root where x equals a half. And this is where x equals 3. All right. So we want to find the set of values where f of x is less than or equal to 0. So where is it less than or equal to 0? Well, it's less than 0. It's equal to 0 when x equals a half. Okay. And it's also equal to 0 when x equals 3. But it's less than 0 when x is less than or equal to 3. So when x is x less than or equal to 3. Sorry. It's less than zero when x is greater than or equal to three. Sorry, when x is greater than or equal to three, because when the x values are more than three, this curve will be below the x-axis, so f of x will have a negative value. Okay, when x is greater than, when x is less than three, when it's in this this real value here, f of x is above the x-axis, so its value, the value of f of x, will be positive. When x is equal to a half the value of f of x is equal to zero. Okay, when x is less than a half, the value of f of x is more than zero. It's above the x-axis. So wherever it's on or below the x-axis is where this is true. So where is it on the x-axis? At half and three. Where is it below the x-axis? When x is greater than three. So these are the set of values together which satisfy the equation. So you could, uh, yeah, so basically that's if they say use set notation, you'd say x is equal to a half. Okay, you'd say x is such that x is equal to a half. And, um, oops, that should be out here. If they said use set notation, which they started to do the new P1, so it's good to get used to. So x is such that x is equal to a half. Union with x is greater than or equal to 3. So there's the end of that question. Okay, that's actually the answer for it, as they ask. But if they said set notation, you'd write something like this. Okay, you'd put union means x equals a half or x is greater than equal to three is where this is true. Okay, um, and there we have the answer to that question.